now that Gemini has transformed to activate the thalami in both hemispheres of the brain, there is great activity of electromagnetic sparking of the spares to introduce the summer solstice. The journey through midheavens sees the thalamus now resting on the boat called Argo in the zodiac of Cancer, the crab. This is the time where one will feel the nurturing and stability provided from the protective, stubborn love of the crab. The boat gathers two complete sets of chromosomes found in the diploid cell within the cerebral cortex. We can say that this is a direct connection to the story of Noah and the Ark. To secure two of each life form to be prepared for the incoming flood. The boat is also recognized as the temple of man. This flood is seen in the pathways of the ventricles as the chrism oil flows. There is also a direct connection to this story as we look at the genes of Isis or Genesis. Chapter 25 verse 24 speaks of the birth of Esau and Jacob. They represent the secretions of the cerebral spinal fluid or the Christ oil found in the choroid plexus. The first to shoot out is the positively charged sodium electrolyte Close behind is the chloride. They wrestle in the chambers with the first active color of red followed by the dilution of the chloride creating the yellow. This yellow indicates to the final stages of the colostrum or the Christ oil. The energized red element of the sodium is Esau and Jacob represents the chloride. These two elements also pull water with them. This is your creation of the flood and the story of the two serpents that climb the ladder of Jacob. Jacob is the heel catcher. The crab is confident as it climbs the hill. It is startled when it hears Ophiuchus wrestling with the serpents. The crab now clutches the leg of Ophiuchus because he blocks the view of the top. He is braced by the snake that is wrapped around his waist. We know that this is the sacral space where the kundalini or the serpents must rise up the terminal ventricles through the spine. When the first eye receives this light, you become the serpent bearer. The serpent bearer becomes the deity of light. The story goes eons ago, when the gods ruled over mankind from their celestial thrones, there became an uprising amongst them, a new deity amongst their ranks, one who sought to overthrow them all and bring balance. Ophiuchus, with his mighty serpent wrapped around him like armor, attempting to bring balance with this light. They show you that when this chrism oil reaches the head of the serpent bearer, he is now given access to the seven sisters of the Messier constellation, and they are crowned with the blessings of the crown of Borealis. Ophiuchus is now a divine imitation of the immortal son of the sun risen from the dead. The Egyptians or commissions thought that Ophiuchus was a pillar of light. Imhotep was credited with the first observations and writings of Ophiuchus. This is made clearer in his first writings of the wounds to the head, brain and spine. Yet there is no star map found in any of the dynasties in Egypt. It was also suggested that the zodiac of Dendera was originally concepted within the period of the Greeks. Imhotep valued the serpent as a symbol of divinity, clarity and everlasting life. Hence the creation of Ophelia Atria. Ophiuchus though had one that was jealous of him. We hear that Zeus saw this power and banished him to earth. This would suggest that this experience would only last for a certain time and would diminish into the body to regenerate again. It is said any being carrying the mark of Ophiuchus was a descendant of the forgotten deity known for their abilities and talents to seemingly go beyond logic, 
transcending boundaries set by their fellow Zodiac brethren. This being some of the reasons why this Zodiac was kept a secret. Orfucus made whole with a balanced brain and an activated penal gland is said to have no opposite on the cosmic clock and walks the pathway to meet the commissioned Egyptian New Year and the return of the Sirius star system, ushering in phenomenal abundance of the mind, soul, and body. There are other stories of a creature called Ophiotaurus. It is a compound derived from ancient Greek Ophis, meaning serpent, and Taurus, meaning bull. Ophiotaurus was a creature that was part bull and part serpent. It was a subject of prophecy which warned whoever burned the innards of Ophotarius would defeat the gods. Berus attempted to burn the Ophotarius but was foiled by a bird sent by Zeus. The bird snatched him and sent him to Zeus who placed him amongst the stars. There are more familiar stories of the serpents and the crab in the myths of Greek mythology. The story of the twelve labors of Hercules. Hercules goes on a quest as the sun to conquer the twelve zodiacs. In one instance, we see him with the crab clutch to his foot and wrestling with the seven-headed serpent. This all describes the same story, expressing the rise of the Kundalini. We also read stories of Seth conquering the serpent and even Moses becomes energized. And we learn in Japan, there's a story of Hebetsukai, also the serpent bearer. And when we journey to 1877, we learn of the world turtle, also called the cosmic turtle or the world bearing turtle, is a giant tortoise supporting or containing the world. It is seen in Hindu mythology, Chinese mythology, and mythologies of some of the indigenous people of America. This was because they calculated on all turtle shells, there would be 13 moons and 28 days, equaling 364 days, plus one day of rest. All the indigenous people and the world understood this wisdom of the turtles and followed the 13 moon calendar. It is clear that on our disc-like cosmic clock, the serpent bearer of Fucus brings the final keys to ascension, standing at the peak illuminating for all to see.